I'm Danny Gorski. I'm the lead singer of Grishka in Washington, D.C. And today I'm going to be teaching you how to use Narcan and how to test your drugs for fentanyl. Narcan is the generic name for a medication known as naloxone, which is used to reverse opiate overdoses. Narcan can be administered intramuscularly using a syringe, or it can also be administered nasally using a spray. Narcan is what's known as an opiate antagonist. And so it means that it works by blocking the receptors that opioids usually bind to, which helps to reverse an overdose. There's pros and cons to using both methods. For example, using the nasal is a lot more user-friendly than the intramuscular, as most folks, myself included, do not have very much experience using syringes. But even though it might be intimidating to use the syringe, it's a lot easier than one might think, and I'll teach it to you today. And also, it's a quicker take time than the nasal. The opiate overdose occurs when a person's opiate receptors are flooded, which leads to respiratory suppression and eventually inadequate levels of oxygen being received to the brain. When you stumble upon a scene where somebody is potentially overdosing, it is important to act quickly. However, there are important steps to take before administering the Narcan. Looking for clues in the scene, for instance. You can assess whether a person's overdosing sometimes just by looking at the context of the scene around you. If there's paraphernalia around them, maybe the person's already a known user, then it's safe to assume that this person might be at least under the influence of opiates. However, just being under the influence of opiates does not necessarily mean that they're ODing. You can start by first trying to wake them up. You can uh, talk to them, yell at them, nudge them. Sometimes verbal stimuli is all you need to wake up a person and have them come to. However, if that person continues to be non-responsive, it's very important to pretty quickly move into physical stimuli. Squeezing fingertips, different pressure points, pinching the back of somebody's bicep. All, all of these are examples of ways that you can potentially revive somebody without the use of Narcan. One could also try opening one of their eyelids. If you see that they have pinned pupils, it's, it's a pretty good chance that they are on opiates. Other signs of a person overdosing would include slow, shallow, irregular breath, skin discoloration. If they're already at the point of skin discoloration or slow and uneven breath, then you probably want to just beeline right to giving them their first dose of Narcan and calling EMS. Be prepared at this point though, when you call EMS to deal with police in the event that you need to advocate for them if law enforcement accompanies the EMS service. Before giving the person Narcan, it's really important for you to let them know that you're going to be injecting them first. Consent is important, but even if the person can't consciously consent to it, sometimes the word itself, just saying Narcan, is enough to trigger somebody waking up who maybe has been hit before or uh, just uh, has heard it a lot. First thing that we are going to do today is we're gonna learn how to use intramuscular. You need your syringe and you need your vial of naloxone. First step, you want to just pop the top off of your syringe and you wanna rip the orange cap off of the naloxone. You'll see that there's a little rubber black hole and that's where you're going to put the, the syringe in. I find that when you're drawing the naloxone out of the vial, it's a lot more helpful to tilt it almost at a horizontal angle. But before you do so, you just want to pull out a little bit of the plunger to leave some air. The whole vial is one dose. So when you're drawing it, you want to pull the whole vial into the syringe. There you go. All right. Now our syringe is completely full. The next step is going to be injecting the person. There are different areas where you can inject a person with Narcan, but traditionally you want to get them at a 90 degree angle in their deltoid. For reference, that would be where you got your COVID vaccine or where you got your flu shot. Any fleshy muscular part of the body also work just fine. For instance, the thigh or the butt cheek would be totally appropriate. After you administer the first dose, the next step immediately is to proceed into breath support. For breath support, you want to tilt the head back of the person to open the airway. And in that process, you also might want to open their mouth to make sure that there's nothing in there that's obstructing their airway. Pull out the CPR shield at this point if you have one. If you don't, you can also use your own shirt. Close their nose and give them one strong breath every five seconds. Do not administer chest compression unless there is no pulse. If three to five minutes go by and there is no EMS yet arrived, then at that point you want to give them their second dose of Narcan. 
It typically takes two doses of Narcan for a person to be revived. Keep maintaining breath support while you wait for EMS to arrive. If the person begins to start breathing, at this point you can roll them over into a recovery position on their side using their arm as a pillow. And at this point when you're waiting for EMS, they might come too, but you, you just want to wait for the EMS to arrive or their friends before you leave the scene. When they do come to, let them know what happened and also let them know that they can't use drugs for the next couple hours as Narcan only lasts in your system for 90 minutes. And if you use drugs in that window of time, you run the risk of uh, stimulating an overdose when the Narcan dissipates from your system. And after that, recap the syringe and dispose of it and your job is done. Next thing we're gonna be learning today is how to use the far more user-friendly nasal Narcan which is basically just flow naze if you're overdosing on opiates. First step is you want to open up your package. There are instructions, but honestly, you don't really need it. It's pretty self-explanatory. This is the protrudent end, and you want to stick that in the person's nose and then just give them a full plunger. Wait five minutes, and if they still are having respiratory issues, you can then proceed to give them another dose. But at this point, you just want to be applying the same breath support that I taught you with the intramuscular demo. Next step today, we're going to learn how to test your drugs. Fentanyl is unfortunately present in way more than just opiates. A lot of people have been experiencing loss due to fentanyl infused cocaine, which is definitely a substance our scene is very familiar with. And so I think it's very important for all of us to learn if we're gonna get high, how to do it responsibly. So you have your fentanyl test strip here. The wavy line is going to be what we're gonna be putting in the solution to test. And then here's our paraphernalia. Two lines means that it's negative and one line means that there is fentanyl in your, in your drugs. So I'm just gonna cut this in half to make it a little bit easier for myself. This is going, you can use really anything, like I've used like a bottle cap before, but this is going to serve as our little Petri dish for checking out this stamp bag. So you want to put your stamp bag in there and then you just need regular tap water and you want to pour some of that in there. And you want to stir it around a little bit just to make sure that any residue off the stamp bag is in there. And now we take our test strip. You want to stick the wavy lines in first. We are just going to stop right before it gets to the thick blue line above the wavy lines. You'll see around the middle of the strip, the water starts to get drawn up and that is where the lines will appear. All right, so this has two lines on it. So that means that there is not fentanyl in here. However, in the event that maybe the lines aren't clear enough or it looks like there's no lines at all, then you would just need to retest at that point. But Whatever this stamp bag was, it didn't have any fentanyl in it. And, and the same can be applied to really any drug. Like I said before, these test strips are super easy and they can test for the presence of fentanyl in any substance, not just opiates. But yeah, easy peasy, be responsible. I would like to thank Beck Bongiovanni. I would like to thank Prevention Point Philadelphia for supplying us with the Narcan and supplying us with the fentanyl test kits. I would like to thank Sunny from Hey56 for hosting me and thank you for listening and watching and bettering yourself and learning. Hail Satan, Grishka for the children, thank you.